Hey, Kairos Church. This is Pastor Matt from Revelation Church up here in Connecticut. I mean, might I say happy birthday, right? You're two years old. Uh, you've seen your fair share of stuff from the beginning as far as uh, hurricanes and all kinds of different things that have gone on. So much stuff has happened already in and through your ministry. Uh, what an example. And so I want to encourage you today to let you know, like, the best is yet to come as far as Kairos is concerned. I mean, I remember when we were two and uh, we just celebrated our seventh birthday and uh, two years old was a great milestone for us because at that point, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you've got traction, you've got momentum, you've seen life change, you're watching people get saved and baptized and marriages are being restored and, and kids are learning and receiving uh, about Jesus and there's all this transformation that's happening. I'm just here to let you know it's not by accident and it's not by chance. It's because people like you, people like me, people like Brennan and Christine, people like our, the bodies in which we lead, we are pressing forward. Like I said, the best is yet to come, but it's gonna take all of us. It's gonna take every bit from everybody. And what I do know is this, with Brent and Christine as your pastors, I just here to let you know, they would never ask of you something that they haven't already done themselves. And so they're here and they're walking shoulder to shoulder with you. And so I'm asking that you would find a way to get connected, find a way to get plugged in, find a way to help push the gospel forward. I hope this video was an encouragement for, to you. Take it, move with it. Understand God wants to use you in this place. Man, I'm looking forward to seeing what God's gonna do with you guys. Thanks for the opportunity. Keep pushing forward. The best is yet to come. Yeah, yeah, all right. Well, amen to that. Hey, it's good to be back at Kairos today. I'm so excited um, that I'm here with you guys. Uh, I, I miss being with you guys. I missed my church. I had a great time um, up at Pastor Matt's church last week in Connecticut, but I miss Kairos, y'all. This is my church. This is my family. I miss you guys. Uh, I, did you miss me? One person. You guys just follow her. There's only one. I'm just kidding. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed Pastor David, who was here last week. Uh, love that guy. I love what God's going to be doing through him um, in 2020. But we, uh, we've we been in this series, Just Getting Started. We're closing it out today. And what we've been doing over the last five weeks, of course, we celebrated uh, what God has already done. But we've been challenging you to look forward to what God has yet to do, right? Because we are just getting started. And so we've been challenging you guys to start something, to start moving towards God and towards the thing he is calling you to. As a church, we started a few things when we kicked this series off. We, uh, we kicked off our live services. How many of you guys have been enjoying the live services on Sunday nights? Um, and so if you miss, if, if maybe you miss a portion of it or you're not here at all, man, you can log in on Sunday nights and you can be able to worship and, and, and get the message. And so that's been a huge blessing. I know I've enjoyed it as well, being able to just sit and worship and, and get the word. Um, and then we also rolled out our Kairos Church app. Um, if you have a smartphone at all, you can, you can you know, get on the app and we're, we got all kinds of stuff going on on there. You can take notes on there. You can submit prayers on there. And there's a lot of cool things that we still want to implement as well with that. And then we also started a new round of our discipleship with our Disciples Path classes. We just kicked those off this past week. And then, of course, we kicked off our new service times. Just kidding. We didn't do that. No, we didn't. We didn't do that. Um, I, uh, you know, last, it wasn't last week. It was the week before that. I decided, you know what, now it's not the right time for that. So we actually, we put a halt on that one, um, but we're going to keep monitoring that. And maybe the beginning of the year, we might be doing that as well. But today we're closing out. We started some things. We're going to keep pushing forward. We're closing out our series. And I want to challenge you, if you haven't already, to begin something, to start something, to, to make a move in the direction that God is calling you. And I want to look at a story today um, from 2 Kings. We'll actually be in chapter 3. So if you have your Bible, you can turn there. Uh, it will be on the screen. You can also open up your app and look at it there. But 2 Kings chapter 3, uh, we'll be starting in verse 9. But let me just kind of get you up to speed. Uh, the, the people of Israel, they're at war. And they, they have enemies surrounding them, and they're not sure they're going to make it. Their, their enemy seems overwhelming and daunting. And so what the, what the people of Israel do is they team up. And so there's these three kingdoms that come together in order to come against the enemies, but they run into this problem that we find in verse 9. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. Follow along. So, so the king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom, they set out. So these three kingdoms are setting out. Uh, and after they had traveled their indirect route for seven days, they had no water for their armies or for their animals. So they ran out of water. 
And if you don't have water and you're traveling and you got all these people, uh, this entire army um, that you're trying to take care of, you got a big problem. And so as they recognize this problem, verses 10 through 14, they're like, this is a big deal. Man, the, the, our enemy, the Moabites, they're going to they're gonna destroy us. They're going to come against us. We're all going to die. And so what they decide is, you know what we need? We need God. We need God on our side. They hadn't been really following God all that well. And so like, well, let's find a, a, a man of God that can help us, that can tell us what we must do in order to see victory. And so they, they find the, the prophet Elisha. And Elisha comes in, and, and it brings it back to the story in verse 15. Here's what Elisha says. The first thing he says, it says, now bring me a musician. Man, I don't know about you, but every time they're playing behind me, like, it's just, it's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel better. Um, and so Elisha started this, right? He's like, musicians will make me sound cooler, and the Holy Spirit will be working because of it. So anyway, um, so he says, bring me a musician. And while the musician played, the Lord's hand came on Elijah. Then he said, this is what the Lord says. Dig ditch after ditch in this wadi. For the Lord says, you will not see wind or rain. But guess what? The wadi will be filled with water and you will drink. You and your cattle and your animals. Uh, if you dig, I will bring you the water. This is easy in the Lord's sight. And oh, by the way, I'm also going to hand over your enemies to you. So he's, it's this, you know, these, 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 these people are looking for God to come and save them and they're getting ready to fight. And, and God says, dig. It's kind of a, an odd way. To, to fight a battle, right? Dig some ditches. I'll, I'll fill them. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to defeat your enemies. It's a, it's a weird way. You, how are you going to win a battle by digging? And this isn't the first time that God's done this. If you remember the story of Jericho and, and Joshua and the Israelites coming to Jericho, God didn't say, hey, go in there and just start killing people. He said, all I need you to do is listen, just march, march for seven days around this thing. And you're like, you want us to march? What? That's so weird. And he says the same thing in this battle. Start digging. Start doing what I'm telling you to do, and I promise you will see victory and you will see blessing. You see, sometimes God is going to call us to things that we never even considered, right? It's unconventional by our, we would never have chosen that, but God's going to call us to it. And here's why. In Isaiah 55, it says that God's ways are not our ways, and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. And so God may be calling you to do something, to start something that you never would have even imagined because he's got something that he wants to do in and through you. And so what that means is when God says go, no matter how weird it sounds, we go. When God says move, no matter the direction, we're, we're, we're like, no, I don't think so, we move. When God says march, we march. When God says start, we start. And when God says dig, guess what? We dig. We dig deeper into our faith. We dig deeper into scripture. We dig deeper into prayer, into worship, into serving, and into giving, and into equipping one another in our faith so that we can advance the gospel of Jesus Christ in and through us. We start digging. You want to know what happens when we dig, when God says to start digging, we will see and experience victory and blessing in our lives. But not just in our lives. Man, he saved an entire nation. Look, in, in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 20, it goes on. So they, they dig all these ditches. And then it said, water suddenly came from the direction of Edom, and the water filled the land. They went from not having water at all to digging ditches to God providing them with all they needed. Verse 22, the sun was shining on the water, and the Moabites, this is their enemies, saw that the water across from them was red like blood. This is blood, they exclaimed. The kings have clashed swords and killed one another. So let's go and spoil to the spoils, Moab. So they, they thought that these three kingdoms fought up against each other and they were just seeing pools of blood. That's wild, right? Verse 24 says, however, when the Moabites came to the Israelite camp, the Israelites attacked them and they fled from them. So Israel went into the land and struck down the Moabites. Not only did God bring them the water that they needed, but God also brought them the victory through digging of ditches. Man, God wants to do and see things in your life, but you got to be willing to dig if you want to experience the victory, if you want to uh, experience the blessing. You see, when you're willing to dig, when God says, how God says, where God says, when you're willing to start the things that God is calling to, you will begin to build this, this solid foundation. This foundation that is built on a rock, and no matter what happens, no matter the storms, no matter the trials, no matter what you face, because you've built it the way that God called you to, it's on a firm foundation, you will not be shaken. Luke 6, this is, this is the promise we get from Luke 6. It says, everyone, everyone who comes to me, 
Here's my words and does them. That's very key. It's one thing to hear. It's another thing to do, right? Here's my words and does them. I will show you what he is like. He is like a man who's building a house who did what? He dug deep and he laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream broke against that house and it could not shake it because it had been well. It says you dig deep. You dig deep, you build that foundation. You, you do the things that I'm calling you to. Man, when you're willing to pick up that shovel and put in the work and dig deep and start something, I promise you, you will not be shaken because your, your foundation is built on the rock of Jesus Christ. We gotta be willing to dig deep. When we dig deep in our faith, when we dig deep in our church, God is going to bring more more healing, more hope, more purpose. He's going to bring the things that we have been needing. God will bring more people in to experience his blessings. He will bring more people to embrace Jesus in their lives, but we've got to dig. And listen, this call to dig, this is what's so important. Man, this call to dig is for every single one of us. If you are a Jesus follower, you were called to dig. You were called to start. You were called to move in the direction that God has called you. You're called to follow him, to get in and be a part of the mission. We are all called to kingdom work in our lives. Man, when, when, when God and Elijah, through, through God, uh, through Elijah, told him, he said, you got to start digging. And he didn't say, you know what you need to do is you need to find a bunch of diggers and have them dig. He just said, start digging. And everyone started digging, man. They had shovels, they had their hands. They started digging because God told them to. And today, that's what I wanna challenge you to. Just to start, start digging, start. Wherever God's calling you, whatever God has for you, start digging. And yes, digging is hard work. Has anyone ever ha uh, had the, the pleasure of digging a pool? Anyone ever done that? Y'all, it's the worst, okay? I'm, like, uh, I've done it one time and one time, okay? And I, I never wanted to do it again. But that's the reality. Digging is, is not easy. It is hard work. It is uncomfortable. It is challenging. But here's the reality of it all. When you're willing to dig the way that God says, and when God says, it will pay off. Because if it's for God, if it advances the gospel of Jesus, if it grows who you are in Jesus, no matter how hard it is, it's always worth it. And there will be a payoff in the end. Now you wanna know how, how we got to where we are today as a church? We got where we are today by digging. And, and, and we kept digging. We didn't grow weary. We didn't grow tired. We didn't lose faith. We didn't keep our eyes off Jesus. We didn't stop. We just kept digging. When, when we were in, in the early stages of, of the launch, we did these vision meetings. And I remember, man, one time like 20 people showed up and I expected 50. You know what we did? We kept digging. Uh, and when, when we were wanting to plant, we wanted to plant in Auburndale. And, and man, it was just door after door after door was shut, but I didn't give up. I just kept digging. And, and listen, when a hurricane rolled through and just, man, postponed our launch, you know what we did? We kept digging. And we, that's what we did. And when, well, man, we expected 300 plus people to be at our, our launch day. And we, we got 200, less than 200 people. You know what we did? We kept digging. When, 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 when we lost our funding, we kept digging. When we had to move locations, we kept digging. You see the pattern here? We didn't stop doing the work that God called us to just because we experienced a few bumps along the way, just because it was hard and challenging. No, we kept digging. We didn't get here by chance. We didn't get here by accident. God called us, we followed him, and then we put in the work and we started digging and we have experienced life change all the way to this day. And we know that we're gonna keep experiencing that. Now listen, I, I get it. You're busy, right? You're busy and, and you got a lot going on. And there always will be something going on. There will always be an excuse and a reason not to. But when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to the things that God is calling you to, you can't afford not to. There is too much at stake because there are people that don't know about, haven't heard, and haven't seen the hope that you have found in Jesus Christ. We're called to dig deep. Man, I'm, I'm telling you what, today is a day to dig. Today is a day I, 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 wanna, I wanna challenge you to commit, to start something, to start digging, to stop making excuses, to stop thinking that God can't use you, to stop thinking that you're too busy. There is no such thing, listen to me, as a passive, idle disciple of Jesus Christ. 
The, there's no such thing as a passive idol disciple of Jesus Christ. We are all, as Jesus followers, called to get up and to go, right? To grow who we are in Jesus, Amen. Man, to, to advance the gospel through his church so that other people can hear about and see what Jesus is doing in our lives. We're all called to start. How will you start digging today? Again, we've been challenging you guys this whole, this whole series. Pastor David did it last week. I, I did it the weeks before that. How will you start digging? I, I have two simple ways, two simple ways that you can start digging today. The first one is that you can dig into the mission of Kairos by serving, by serving, by just getting involved. When we, when we kicked off this series, we, we rolled out a new way for you to become a moment maker. And those are our volunteers here. We, we wanted to make it a little bit easier for you to get plugged in. We wanted you to have all the information that you needed about what it means to get plugged in to Kairos. And so we kicked out these new Moment Maker cards where you can choose your team. You can sign up for the, the, the service time that you want to serve in. And then we'll get these cards directly to the kids ministry director or the presentation team or whoever. And then we'll get you plugged in. And so I would challenge you, man. If, if, if God's been calling you to serve in some capacity, but you've been pushing it off for whatever reason, today, take this card out, fill it out. Man, pick the serve team that, that God is calling you to and get plugged into the mission of the church by serving. If you're already serving, I think I said this a few weeks ago, if you're already serving, listen, God will always grow you and expand your capacity. So if God is calling you to do more, to go more, to take on more, do it. Go to your, 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 your team leader or your coordinator or the director and say, listen, this is what God is calling me to do. I want to do more. I want to help more. How can I do it? Get plugged in and start digging, start serving. Here's the second way. You ready? To dig into the mission of Kairos Church by supporting the church. We have one more thing we want to kind of kick off and start as we close out this series. And what we're wanting to do is, of course, it's gonna, it's gonna allow us to continue to dig deep to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we are starting what I'm calling the Just Getting Started End of Year Offering. And let me explain uh, the offering to you. There's three parts to this offering. And over the next five months, over the next five months, we have two of our biggest outreach opportunities, Christmas and Easter. People that don't typically go to church will go to church on Christmas in Easter. And when they do, they're going to hear the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. And so what we want to do for Christmas and Easter, now we haven't started planning Easter yet, but we have started planning Christmas. And what we want to do is we want to go big. We're going to have our, our normal two services, but during those two services, we're going, to, uh, we're going to put on this, what we're calling a frozen village. Frozen two's coming out. Woo, woo, can't wait to see it. Um, and so we're doing this frozen village. We're bringing in eight tons of real snow, y'all. It's snow in Florida. It'll probably be hot out and it'll be melted, but it doesn't matter. We're bringing it in, right? We're going, to, we're going to do this frozen village. We're going to have real snow. We're going to bring in the frozen characters. We've got Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven, if anyone has a reindeer. We don't have Sven. So if you have a reindeer, if you could bring the reindeer, that'd be great so we could get Sven. Um, and then we have our giant snow globe, and there's all kinds of other fun activities, and that's for the kids. And of course, as we do every year, we're going to bring a powerful worship experience where we tell people about the life-changing redemption and hope of Jesus Christ, okay? And so we're going to go after it. We're going to go after it. And what that means is if we're doing all this, we're going to do some outreach. We're going to, we're going to send out mailers. We're going to do billboards. We're going to do invite cards. We're going to do yard signs. And we're going to do all the same thing when we jump into Easter so that we can tell people about Jesus and they can embrace Jesus in their life. So that's the first part of our Christmas offering to help us, man, do the things we want to do for Christmas and Easter. The second part, man, is all about purchasing and repairing equipment. Over the last two years, uh, man, we're a set up and tear down church. Man, all this stuff goes in a trailer, y'all. And so there's been just a lot of wear and tear on the things that we have. We have broken and duct taped and zip tied and patched so many things. Y'all don't look too close at what we got going on here because it's jank, okay? So uh, we, <laughs> there's just a lot of things that we need to repair. We got signs and banners that are torn and ripped and patched. We got our VIP tent. Varney was just complaining to me about it yesterday. He's like, yo, man, this thing is garbage. And he's like, get me a new one. I'm like, give me money. And uh, that it wasn't necessarily the conversation, but it is. It's, it's torn. It's ripped because we've been using it for, actually, that tent we've been using for almost three years. We have, we've broken so many TVs, y'all. It's wild how many TVs we've broken, and we've, we've repaired some, and we've fixed some, and some got cracks and lines through them, but we want to we replace those. We also want to do some upgrades. 
um, to some of our equipment in here to make this an even better experience. You know, we kicked off these live services and we really wanted to have two different camera angles. We wanted to offer kind of that live feed in here as well. So we want to we grab another camera. We want to pick up a, a switching console so that we can switch between cameras and make our live services and in-house services even better. The computer, yeah, look, everything's going bad you know, around here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the computer that runs everything you see Man, that thing is in a bad way, y'all. Like, it's slow. It's old. A few weeks ago, Varney just decided to kick it over and break it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, take care of my stuff. Other people's stuff, Varney. And, and so it's like, there's just stuff like that. That It's just, it's normal wear and tear. When you're moving stuff in and moving stuff out, stuff gets broken. And we want to we wanna make sure that, man, we are always bringing our very best. Now, here's the other thing we want to upgrade. If you look over to this side, you'll see that it's nice and it's blacked out. You can't see the lights that are past it. But if you look over to this side, you can see through that. You know what I'm saying? There's still light coming through. And so we were able to, we had enough money to buy one side of curtains. And we've just been really waiting to buy the other side so that it matched. We want to we make sure that it all matches and it looks good. Um, we're also, when it comes to these curtains and these poles, it's, if you've ever witnessed it or experienced it, it's, it's a lot of work to do all this. And so we found this uh, cart that they make where we can take all the poles, all the curtains, all the bases, put them on one cart. We don't have to take the curtains off. And man, we really want to get that. It'll help streamline our setup. Stream, yeah, these people are cheering because they're the ones that got to do it. Um, it'll streamline our process. I, I, I kid you not, I was doing the math. I think it'll shave like an hour off of our time I'd set up on Friday nights and an hour on, on Sundays when we're tearing it down. My setup and teardown team are like, whoop, whoop. Um, the other thing that's really cool about that cart is, you know, our, our movement students meet right here on Wednesday nights. They meet in the music room, and it's, uh, it's a smaller room, and they're kind of outgrowing it, and we've, we've been wanting to move them into here, but in order to transform this space the way that we do, it's gonna, it takes a lot of work, and it takes a lot of time, and we just don't have that. And so if we're able to get that cart, we can, man, allow the movement students to experience an even better service on Wednesday nights. So that's the second part. We got Christmas and Easter. And then we got purchasing and, and, and replacing equipment. And then the third thing is with this Christmas offering and end of year offering, we want to partner with what other ministries are doing. And so I've asked a couple of ministries uh, to join me here today. Uh, so I'm gonna ask that Jen Sturk from Echo Ministries would come join me on the stage. Give it up for her as she makes her way up here. There you go. Now, Jen has uh, come out before. It was probably about six months ago, I think. Um, and so what I wanted to, I just want to give her just a few minutes. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell people here that maybe not know you about ECHO. Sure. My name is Jennifer Stark, and I'm one of the founders of ECHO Ministries. ECHO stands for, thank you so much, uh, Everyday Christians Helping Orphans. We started a couple of families with a diaper drive, and it's grown. Um, so digging in, we bit. understand because we said yes, and then God just kept providing and providing and providing, and now we have four locations where families can come every month and get items for children that are in their care, foster, adoptive, relative, non-relative placements for free. And we have a distribution center as well, so uh, we provide um, the spiritual and tangible needs of kids in care at those locations. Yeah, absolutely. And that, my family loves their ministry so much. Every single month we get free stuff and it's fantastic. Um, okay, so what are some ways that uh, people can get involved with ECHO? So I mentioned the ECHO locations. That's where the families come in. Uh, when the families enter in, obviously they're gonna be shopping for the kids' needs. There's an opportunity to play with the kids while they're there. Um, to just talk with the families while they're there. Um, you may be uh, gifted in that, and that's where you feel drawn to. Also, our distribution center, uh, it's 2,000 square feet, AC, praise the Lord, uh, where, we, <laughs> where we go through all of our donated items. In the bottom left corner, you can see um, a group we actually had there very recently. And we just fellowship and spend time together and go through all of our donations so that we're able to pack out our locations for the families. And uh, there's also other ways that you can get involved. Everybody is a gift. Are you talented in something? Um, whatever that is, if you feel drawn to serve families that are uh, caring for these children, just come and talk to me. I would love to plug you in wherever you're gifted. Uh, building beds, it's an initiative we kicked off. It's a huge need for that. Uh, great place for men to get plugged in as well. And um, a lot of different areas, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so you're a donation-based organization. So how does one get donations to you and what kind of donations are you guys looking for? Okay, so we're always looking for necessities. When kids show up, we hear 90% uh, of the time they don't come with anything. And um, we usually hear they come with a diaper and a t-shirt and that was it. 
And so what we need is to provide these families with the necessities for those kids, socks, underwear, diapers, clothing, shoes, um, mostly boys' clothes, 3T and up. They are rough on their clothes, y'all. So uh, we need and their to shoes. fill that need. Yeah, <laughs> that's their brake system on their bicycles. So yeah. they go through them pretty quickly. And um, those items especially, um, we could always use um, definitely hygiene products and things like that. And we are located in Lakeland across from the airport. So we're a, a bit of a distance from you guys. So if you can identify a family or an individual in your church that can be that drop-off place for your donations, then we can come out and we can pick those items up for you guys. Awesome. And the other thing, and you said this last service, is Echo meets the needs of all kids, all ages in, in the foster care system. So it is birth through 18 year olds, right? Correct. Actually, yeah. 25. 25. Yes. There you yeah, go. And so we're not just, they're not just looking for, you know, just little kid items and stuff like that. They're looking for stuff for teenagers as well. Um, okay. So there are many volunteering opportunities at Echo. If someone wanted to kind of donate and support your ministry, how would they do that? Um, well, you can donate through our Harvest Assemblies website. Our ministry is on there. I've got actually a flyer at the table that will give you the instructions on how you can support us monthly, $10 a month, $25 a month. It'll go to the overall operations. Like he said, we're donation-based, but we're all volunteers. Mm -hmm. So all the money that comes in, it goes directly into these families and allowing us to be able to provide them with the needs. Awesome. So you can get that information there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, very cool. So I just wanted to bring Jen out and uh, just have her kind of talk about her mission. Go ahead and give it up for Jen. Um, if you want to uh, follow them, you can go follow them on Facebook at Echo Min Florida, or you can go check out their website, echominflorida.com. Again, part of our offering is going to be going towards Echo Ministries. The second partner that we have is the Mission of Winter Haven. Would you guys join me in welcoming David Barry to the stage? Now, if you live in and around this area uh, for any amount of time, uh, you, you know about the mission of Winter Haven, and David is the executive director. So, David, take a few minutes. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into being the director of the mission. Well, the mission. The mission is one of those things, uh, I think Forrest Gump said it best, it's like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> And uh, that's what it is every day at the mission. We have people coming in from all walks of life. My wife and I, we came to Polk County in uh, 2004, um, came here to take on a youth pastor position. My career path at the time, I was a firefighter paramedic and uh, worked at All Children's Hospital in the pharmacy and just felt called to help people in a different way. Um, I wasn't raised in a Christian home, so I came to know Jesus and went from putting out fires to starting fires for Jesus, you could say. So, uh, so we moved to uh, Polk County, and uh, we had did uh, eight years of state and federal level prison ministry and street ministry. And when we came to Polk County as a youth pastor, I wanted to find a place for my kids to get involved. I didn't want them to just sit in church week after week. I wanted them to get dirty, get messy in ministry. So uh, I happened to pull into a place I passed 100 times on Central Avenue, a place called The Mission, and uh, met the founder there, uh, Tom Beauregard, um, long hair, surf shorts, sandals, and just never left. And after about a year, came on full time, and here we are 15 years later. Awesome. That's, so. that's awesome. All right, so tell us a little bit about what takes place uh, during the week at the mission. Man, we have, we have people, like I said, from all walks of life, uh, young, old, um, everywhere in between, um, single parent, two parent households, um, our homeless. We, we serve about 15% of those we serve are actually homeless. So that's not our majority of who we serve, but we do serve our homeless. But uh, the two big majority groups that we serve is our low income families. Those that are maybe underemployed or recently unemployed or struggling. And then those that are seniors on fixed income. Uh, fixed income doesn't go very far. So on, you know, throughout the week, we serve a daily hot meal. We're doing about 150 meals a day right now. We also have a food pantry where families and households come in and get groceries. We offer shower and bathhouse facilities for, uh, for individuals and families to uh, come in and get cleaned up, especially when you've got a family living in a car. They can uh, bring in their children and get cleaned up before they take them to school. Things you don't really think about. Then we also have Bible study support groups in the afternoon. Uh, we offer activities. We do uh, art therapy on Tuesdays. We do uh, 
different types of art classes there on, on Tuesday afternoons. Wednesdays, we do Celebrate Recovery. We do a game day, just come in and play uh, Jenga and Uno and chess and checkers. And sometimes we play bingo. We give out granola bars as prizes. <laughs> hey, you can learn a lot when someone loses or wins at bingo, let me tell you. <laughs> so it's just a way to engage people for, for Jesus on a whole different level. Awesome, awesome. So what are, what are some of your big needs right now as an organization? Well, I mean, we're in the holiday season, so we got our big uh, Thanksgiving event and Christmas event coming up. So for Christmas, we're going to need toys. We got about 200 families that we're working with currently, and uh, we start with them first. So uh, we are collecting toys, uh, food for our pantry. Uh, since we do have families come in, kid-friendly foods. Right now, PB&J, that's our, our big food need. Um, hygiene items as far as shampoos, toothbrushes, toothpaste. We definitely need those ongoing, but shampoo is like a, a big need right now. I just found out this week. And then um, we need partners. We've been doing this. The mission's been serving this community since 1977. So we've got over 40 years in the community. And this is all community-driven. No government funding. No, we're not backed by any one church or sponsor. So it's all community-driven. And uh, we have a goal. We need 400 people to make a $25 a month commitment. $25 a month, that's $5.75 a week. Just give up one Starbucks or one Dunkin'. And we can make this happen. But 400 people at $25 a month, we're there. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so if someone wanted to uh, get involved, volunteer at the mission, what, what should they do? Well, you know, Jesus had a very simple principle. I can, I can tell you about the mission all day long because I love it. But Jesus said, come and see, now go and do. So come down to the mission. I actually, I double dog dare you. <laughs> come down to the mission. If you're supporting the mission, you're partnering with any organization, go and see where your resources are going. Come and see, take a tour, and let's talk, and then go and do as, as he leads you. If it's a pray, pray. If it's a give, give. If it's a serve, serve. But do it with excellence. All right, man. Well, thank you so much, David, for joining us today. Thank you. And if you want to, man, you can uh, definitely follow them on Facebook. You can uh, go check out a little bit more, learn a little bit more about them uh, on their website as well. And both Jen and David will be in the back. They have some tables set up. If you want some more information, make sure you stop by and chat with them. Now, we have one more partner that we're, we're, we're partnering with, and uh, he couldn't be here with us today. So check out this video. Hey, what's up, Cairo Church? This is Pastor David Rodeville. I am still excited from being with you guys last weekend. It was so much fun. So again, thank you so much for having me. And I, I wanna thank you in advance for partnering with us at 12 Church. And for those of you that may or may not know, in 2020, we are going to be launching 12 Church in West Pasco County, which is a suburb of Tampa, just north of Tampa. And Really, the story behind 12 Church is one that started when I was a senior in high school. When Jesus saved me, he immediately gave me this burden, a passion, a desire to reach the people in my community. And in reality, that's never gone away. And so for over a decade now, I've been praying that God would make it possible for me to plant a church in West Pasco County. And I've just been praying and asking God to make a way and he has finally made a way. And I am so excited for March 1st, which is our official launch date. And so as we gear up, we are beginning to partner with different churches and organizations who see the vision and understand the vision of 12 Church and, and wanna be a part of it. And so I'm so excited now for this partnership with Kairos Church. And I want you to know that what you're sowing into 12 Church now, I believe is not only going to have local, but regional and even by God's grace, global impact as 12 Church desires to be a church that plants churches. And so thank you for your partnership with 12 Church. And I cannot wait to be with you all again. I love you, Kairos. God bless. All right, so, man, all, our offering is going towards these, these three things. Um, we, and, and it's $30,000. It's three months from now um, until January 26th. And this offering is just that. It's an offering. This is above and beyond the tithe, okay? Because the tithe helps us do what we do week in and week out. But the offering allows us to do and accomplish even more. And I know 30,000 sounds like a lot, but let me break it down for you. Listen, we have about, a, on average, 150 adults. If, a, if 150 adults were willing to give $200 over the next three months, we would reach our goal. That's $66 a month. That's $18 a week. Now, now here's the deal. It, there are some people that are gonna be able to give more. And so what that means is even if you give $20 a month or $30 a month, we're, we're gonna still be able to reach our goal. So I'm gonna, man, I'm gonna challenge you. Man, 
make a commitment today. I, I, there's these cards, they were on your seat. This is the Just Getting Started Offering Commitment card. Man, I want you to take some time uh, over the next few minutes to pray about what you can commit towards this offering so that we can accomplish greater things here in our church, so that we can see what God is going to do through the mission, so that we can uh, be a part of what God is going to do through Echo, what, so we can see what God is going to start doing through 12 Church. God wants us to dig deep through serving. Man, and, and if, if you haven't already, man, pick, grab that card, fill it out, pick a team. Man, let us show you the ropes and get you plugged into what God is doing. Man, start digging into serving. Start digging into supporting this offering, man. And man, make a commitment today. Listen, $20 a week, $20 a week. And we can begin to see God do even greater things for the kingdom through Kairos, through the mission, through Echo, through 12 Church. Church, today, do you believe that we can do this? Do you believe that we can commit to doing this right here? You believe it? Remember, we're just getting started. God has more to do in and through you and in through us. I wonder today, are you ready to dig deep to watch God do miraculous things in our lives, in our church, and in our community?